Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with Down to Earth Astronomy. You remember last time I was very in doubt which node I should pick and you can see here I've decided to go with the electronics node which for two reasons. One, it gives us this uh, seismometer which is going to be very useful in future surface missions. So if you want to go and explore um, or make exploration uh, runs to the moon, we can do that. But mainly because we're going to get the bigger relay antenna and the bigger... Um, direct antenna and that is because today we're going to do a um, a deep space mission so I'm thinking this mission is going to do several things for us and, and first of all it's going to be our first uh, unmanned mission um, so that's going to be the first that's um, the second the, or the, the, the main priority of the mission is to test the range of our surface stations so we're going to put a fairly big antenna on here and we're going to see how far we can go before we lose signal with the surface antennas we have. Now, the, the relay st uh, stations we built around the uh, Kerbin uh, was never really meant to go deep space. They were already always meant to just give access to within Kerbin's sphere of influence. But I still want to see how far out we can go with the antennas if we put some bigger ones here. Um, so that's the first, um, first priority of the mission. Second priority is to try and get a little bit of science from... Um, from deep space, so we're gonna bring some science module along that we can then beam data back to to Kerbin. Um, so that's the second priority. That's getting that data from deep space, and and now we're getting into the stretch objective of this mission, which is going to see how far we can then get. Um, if we can get to uh, to Duner, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, how far we can get, of course, it depends on the antennas, which is, of course, the primary uh, mission. So we got to bring enough science experiments that we can do science around Duna if we want to. Um, other than that, we're just going to see how far we can go. Um, so first of all, I will go ahead and I'll build a, a probe. Oh, yeah, I should say at, at the last part of it, I won't build a direct and relay antenna because the last part of it is if everything else fails, it's just going to be sitting there and then maybe we can use it uh, to bounce the signal oops, to bounce the signal home at some point. So, so I want to have a fairly big relay antenna on, so we can at least use it for that um, at some point in the future. But for now, I'm going to build the probe, and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. And here we have it, this bulky-looking thing. It, it's it's quite a weird-looking probe, but I kind of like it. Probe body, a few batteries at the top. We have a huge antenna up here. That's one of the new antennas that we got. We have some uh, some smaller antennas here just for local control. And we, of course, have solar panels around here just to give us power. And this is this the relay antenna? This is the current. Button. So the top of the button should be relay. Yes, that's the relay. And that is the direct control antenna. Boop, we can pop that open right there. Um, and then down here, we of course have our standard setup with all the science equipment and a uh, science lab there. All the, um, it's all the science experiments basically down here. So that's going to be the probe. Um, and all we really need from here, I'm going to retract all this again. Okay, so all we, really, all we really need from now, uh, now on is just to build a, um, a launcher that can carry this into uh, into space and hopefully some kind of talk that's going to be able to um, to push it around on, uh, on our mission. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, and build probably some standard asparagus design and take it from there. And here we have it, our beauty, beauty, beautiful rocket. <laughs> As you can see here, pretty standard uh, asparagus launcher, fuel is being pumped around in a circle. Up here we have a uh, puddle poodle and a little poodle poodle engine. This boy here, um, fairly effective, fairly effective in vacuum, and it doesn't give us much thrust, but it should give us enough. Is this vectoring actually? Yes, it has vectoring, four and a half degrees, which is really good. And up here, of course, we can see our probe from before now enclosed in a fairing. I should have set up the staging, so that should all be working. We have our new, newly researched mainsail engines. That's going to be the first launch with these. Um, so. Um, Let's start by just getting this into orbit and uh, and take it from here. The launch should be, hopefully if everything goes wrong, should be fairly uneventful. We're just going to throttle up the engines and go. Look at that thrust. So uh, let's get this into space. 
Okay, launch take two. I added a few separate tons here to set the rockets because they were just smacking into the rest of the rocket and destroy everything. So that went up in a ball of flame. So uh, let's try that again. Pretty much same procedure, launching straight up here from the beginning. These main sails are hungry. Look at that power, uh, that fuel consumption. We're gonna throttle down because otherwise we're gonna go too fast. We can begin the turn very quickly here. Um, it's not gonna do as well, but I hope the separate tons should help us push um, push the rockets or put the boosters out of the way. So they're almost out. Let's see how this goes this time. Fuel. Come on. Flame out. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. That's a lot better. I'm just going to keep pushing upwards and, uh, and you guys can see me in space. We did it. We're now in space so we can now deploy the fairing. Boom. There we go. And we're getting ready to uh, circulate our orbit. You can see I still have some of the boosters actually with me. Oh, let's get SRS back online. A little trick that I often use. In this case, for instance, I have next to no reaction wheel. It means I have no control over the rocket. Next to no control over the rocket when my engines are not firing. I can't really control the rotation. So if you turn SRS on and just give it a little bit of a... Of a, of a um, of a turning motion with the rockets, then it will keep turning in that direction. You can just let it slowly drift into the right position. Um, it's often a lot easier, and then you can just turn SS on and then fire the engines just for a short while um, while your turn is complete. But there we pretty much have it. That's our orbit, and oh, looks like uh, these engines are empty. Yes, they are, so we can get rid of those. Oh, that was a little little dangerous. Look at them go. Whee! <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's get this thing fired up and uh, get ready. Now that we are in space, we can uh, uh, extend antennas. Oh, it's not going to do that in a group anymore. Well, that's slightly annoying. And there we have it. The probe is now fully deployed. And we still have, of course, we are very close to Kerbin, so we should. We still have a very strong signal. Now... The next thing we want to do is we want to figure out if we want to go to Dunet. I mean, it is our stretch objective. Uh, we could go to Eve. Would Eve be a better option? Maybe Eve is a better option. It's closer. Anyway, we're going to go... We, at least we're going to go to the inner solar system. <clears throat> oh, is that the Sol Kerbal system? I don't know. But that means we want to move away from the planet in the opposite direction, which is that way over there. So if we want to move out in that direction, um, we should probably fire our rockets round about here, I guess. So... Um, Let's take a quick warp around the planet. And then I can actually show you that small turning motion that uh, that I talked about before. Okay, we're just about ready. So I'm almost at the right note, but I'll just quickly show you what I mean. So if I want to turn this rocket, for instance, I would turn SRS on. You can see me turning does pretty much nothing. So give it a slight bit of thrust. Start the turning motion and stop it. You can now see it's beginning to drift in the right direction. And as soon as I'm at where I want to be, I turn SRS on and fire the engines again. That's a very, very easy and cost-effective way. You don't waste any electricity to use the reaction wheels. You just spend a tiny, tiny amount of fuel. But we should begin to work on our escape burn, which we're going to do now. And uh, I hope that this engine actually has enough or sufficient fuel to uh, push us into uh, interplanetary space. It definitely should have. And then we can move over to the portal engine afterwards. Okay, the burn is complete, and we are now escaping Kerbin. You can see here, I did overdo the burn a little bit. We did actually get into an orbit within uh, EVE, so uh, I overdid that a little bit. But at least we got it in, in at least the right direction. So uh, we're just going to go and move out into interplanetary space. We still have a strong signal here, so that's what we would be interested in. That is, how long can we keep a signal back to Kerbin? And there we have it. We are now officially in interplanetary space. That means that we can now do our first set of experiments. And uh, we're just going to transmit the data back. Um, oh, God, it's going to be difficult. We're just going to transmit the data back right away. Um, I know we're not going to get full uh, observe. So you see the transmitter is, is less, um, around 40%. So it could definitely be better. But again, it's better than um, than nothing, I guess. So let's just transmit that back. Actually, can we just can we keep experiment? What happens if we keep the experiment? 
and then go here and ah oh, we have to transmit all the data at once. So let's just observe everything and then transmit it back. So we ran out of electricity charge. Um, so our batteries were not really up for the task of uh, sending that much data. So we're just going to let them uh, let them recharge, and uh, then we're going to give them another go. So there we have it, fully charged. Let's uh, transmit data again. Look at how it's draining our batteries here. And on the second go, we managed to get the last bit of data beamed back to uh, to Kerbal. So that was actually the first part of our um, our mission. That was to get into interplanetary space. Now, second part is now we're going to begin and explore our options in terms of getting into an Eve encounter. I think Eve could be a good one just because it is... Uh, actually, how many moons does Eve have? Just the one, right? Gilly, which is, I believe, a very light moon. If you look at the orbit, it looks like a captured object, so that must be a very light one. How about Duna? Oh, that Moho. Oh, sorry, Duna's out, of course. Duh. Great. Um, Moho has no moons, obviously. Okay, so Eve is gonna... Eve it is. We're gonna move into the inner solar system. So uh, we're gonna set this as our target. And... Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to begin to try and see if I can get a uh, an encounter. Okay, so after quite a bit of uh, fiddling around, it turned out that an even encounter was we're in a really bad position to go for an even encounter. Pretty much in the <laughs> worst position we could be. So I decided to go for a Moho encounter instead. I set up a node. It's uh, 2,500 meters per second of delta V. Um, and I set it up out here because that's going to be a... Uh, a correction to our inclination because this is inclined quite a bit as you can see with the rest of the planet and especially with our orbit so we're doing it out here to both do our inclination change and to do the capture we're getting something here very close but we'll have to adjust that getting closer um later on now we're not trying to get into orbit we're just trying to get a uh, flyby if we have enough fuel we might actually go in and then see if we can come back out for uh, for that even encounter we'll wait and see um what happens so uh, for now that's gonna be our note and uh, let's go Okay, we are now on a note. We can see we are getting, we're going to get some distance here for, um, um, almost at the note actually, from uh, from Kerbin. Our strength is degraded now to uh, to 61%. So and that is our burn complete. Let's uh, keep a close eye on, uh, on our signal strength now that we are beginning to move away. Because now we're going to begin to move into the, to the inner part of the solar system. So we should begin to really begin to see some signal degradation now. Oh, and there was a so do you see that? What happened there was Kerbal spun around because the antennas of the space center is much more powerful than the relay stations. I just bumped back up to a hundred percent signal strength because now uh, the space center is actually pointing in the right direction. So that's a good indication. It can be a problem, and it definitely shows that if we're going to do deep space missions, see oh oh there we go. And see how it's 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 jumping down to sixty seven percent from time to time. That is as Kerbin are spinning around. Whenever we don't have a direct line of sight to, um, to the space center, we're being degraded to those 60 something percent. Okay, so we're beginning to get quite far away now. And um, again, this is our main, main purpose of the mission is to test these relay stations. And oh, there we go. So you can see now we actually lost probe control. We do no longer, we no longer have access to uh, control the probe. So we have to wait until um, until daylight before we can do um, do the next maneuver, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to set up a new maneuver some there, somewhere a little bit in the future here, somewhere along the line or our orbit. Try and get this down to a uh, to a proper encounter, um, and then I guess we will see if we can actually make that maneuver during the daytime or doing the, while the space center is above the horizon. We have control, so uh, it's time to do that burn. Oh, there we have the encounter. I'm actually going to go and, and keep an eye on uh, on that encounter manually because we burned a little bit later than first planned. I want to make sure that our, um, that our periaps is going down all the way. As long as it's going down, we're going to keep burning here. So uh, I just began because we didn't burn at the exact right time. But look, so far it's looking pretty good. We're getting our periaps down to... Uh, oh, no, we're getting... A can we see this like all the time? There we go. Oh, now it begins to go up again. Okay. 
So we're gonna cancel that maneuver there. And um, then I think it's time to actually time accelerate all the way out to Moho. And we're gonna adjust it as we in this as we have influence. We're going to adjust it so that we get a close encounter. Um, because we do have two sets of science experience with us. It's designed to go both for high and low. Um, so we're going to go for that and uh, and then we're going to see if we can actually transmit because now we're going to be very far away. Okay, we're in the sphere of influence. If we actually come in at a quite lucky angle here because you can see we're going to shoot up slightly high. If we were going in behind, so like over here, we would end up blocking our signal to, to Kerbin. And we are in the daytime right now, so... Um, I guess it's just, I like to do these maneuvers uh, manually, if I can find, where is it, there it is. Um, because I, I personally think it's a lot easier just to, to adjust these kind of things manually, especially now that we are... Uh, okay, so let's point us about... Okay, we're gonna shoot, so we're gonna aim here, that's where we're aiming, right? And we wanna get this closer, so we're gonna point in somewhat like that direction there i think should be good so if we're burning here we should begin to see our periaps moving down closer towards the surface yes here we go and that should be adjustments enough i mean we're gonna come by here at an extreme velocity i mean i don't know how f i mean we're going compared to moho we're going at four thousand meters per second and I wouldn't be surprised if that thing would double when we're there. So we're nowhere near being able to um, to do a uh, to do an, uh, a deorbit burn. Um, but that was never the uh, never really the goal here. The only thing I'm concerned is because we're coming in so quickly. That means that that the window that we have to actually collect our science is going to be very narrow. And if that happens to be while um, the space center is below the horizon we don't have a direct line to it we're not going to be able to do our experiments um but the backup plan is to then just do the flyby and then do science again out here um then we will have two sets of science from um um from high over uh, moho but i guess that's better than uh, better than nothing so um we're going to collect our first set of experiments exactly the same way as we did before Okay, we have all the science collected, and I'm just going to point the probe towards the sun to get maximum efficiency out of all of these um, all of these solar panels. Now, we just have all the sign floor here, the antennas are blocking part of the solar panel, so they should probably be put off at an angle so they wouldn't do that. But that's probably okay. So now, just to get as much light onto these solar panels as, uh, as we possibly can while we are going to, uh, to transmit the data back. Transmit all. Let's see what it does. See, it's it's able to keep up with the electricity much easier now. It's not draining us as quickly as it was before. It also helps that we're closer to the sun, of course. Um, but and there we go. We managed to transmit all the data um, by positioning our probe in a little bit more clever way. Okay. So next step is I'm just gonna go ahead and open this bay so we have this ready inching my way forward here i'm basically doing a binary search um to get as close as i can observe materials bay while in space near Mo moho so that's it right wow this is quick keep that oh come on Lock pressure. Lock temperature. Why is this thing turning? Or is it just, just it look like it's turning? Is the camera is turning around it. Oh, look at that. Okay, we want to do the deorbit burn. It's actually too late now. <laughs> That's okay. Beautiful, beautiful flyby of Moho here. Very rocket planet to look at. Um, so now we should actually be able to do the exact same thing. Going to transmit the data home. And uh, that actually means that now we have completed pretty much all the objectives objectives that we had for the mission. We managed to make it to another body. We have no experiments left. Um, 
So the only thing we can now consider is what to use the last bit of fuel for. I mean, could we put this into a more... Um, to a better orbit? I guess the best we could do was to move out to our Apo apps and then boost our Peri apps up as high as we can. Um, alternatively, we go up here and we try to get it in as close to the sun as possible. But there's really no reason to do that because we don't have we can't collect science anyway. The reason why I want to boost this up is to try and make it match Kerbin as much as possible because now this um, is going to act as another uh, relay station. Um, out here in space that we can use uh, just in case. And as luck would have it, now that we are at our app wraps, we are <laughs> exactly where's Kerbin. So Kerbin is here, right? And Kerbin is exactly behind the sun. So of course that's gonna block our uh, line of sight. So all we can really do now is just time warp until we have a connection until until we get clear and there's the connection and now we are going to try and boost our uh our peri apps up as high as we can with the remaining fuel as possible so look at this now that we are out here we actually have the signal decommitted to 65 percent so that means that with the space center on kerbin we can probably expect to go uh, Duna missions is, is definitely possible, maybe even Dress, but I wouldn't go further out than Dress without having proper um, deep space or proper antennas, or better antennas than the one we currently have. Um, so this is of course going to act as a... I mean, if we put it up in the high orbit, it could have helped us there, but that probably means we will have to have um, more relay stations scattered around the solar system to, uh, to help us. Um, get a proper connection if we're moving out further than dress. Okay, we're burning up our last fuel here. And we can see we actually managed to get a fairly decent orbit. This is not half bad. I wanted to get this as close to, uh, to Kerbin's orbit again as I could. And um, there we go. That was the last bit of our fuel. So this is going to be our parking orbit. This is going to be where we're going to leave this probe. I just have to try and figure out what's the best orientation to leave it in. I would call that a, a successful mission. Um, revert flight? No, definitely not. Let's go back to the space center and see how much science we managed to uh, to collect now that we've beamed some of the science back. And we're actually up to 600. That should mean we should be able to select two more nodes. That's absolutely wonderful. We learned a lot about deep space missions. We've we got our relay uh, network tested. And we now know our limitations. So next step, I think, in the exploration of a deep space will be to begin to build a space station. Hopefully one that we can upgrade later on because I want to build a space station with these new antennas on. Um, that we're going to put in a fairly high orbit. Probably actually considering doing a polar orbit. Um, but we'll see about, uh, about that later on. But what we're going to do because polar orbits are a little bit... Um, a little bit difficult so maybe we're going to build satellites with these dishes on um maybe we're going to build a space station I, I, i'm thinking a space station is a good uh, good place to start so um but that's going to be in another episode we're also going to figure out which notes we're going to pick next time so um i really hope you enjoyed it if you did give a like down below remember to subscribe to the channel and until next time i will see you guys in space